Well, joining us now with more insight into the Italian economy is Vidak Radonik. He's managing partner at Beryl Consulting Group in New York. Welcome, Vidak. Good evening, Rochelle. Now, as we've seen, there have been 10 straight quarters of growth in Italy. What's driving the sustained success? Um, I don't know if I will call it sustained success, but uh, um, Italy has been going through a, a, a very big, uh, I would say, uh, transition. Um, it's, uh, its little cousin, Greece, has not been uh, performing as good, but uh, as we know, um, it's all about uh, Italy becoming, um, I would say, not a sick uh, man of Europe, but trying to transition itself. However, uh, we have seen some good signs. It looks uh, pretty uh, good, but uh, again, we have a huge problem with the uh, possibility of ECB raising interest rates. And if they do raise interest rates slightly, uh, Italy is going to be in big problem and Europe is going to be even bigger problem and the world as a whole. Now, despite some of the momentum that we've seen then in the last 10 months, some analysts still say that Italy is the biggest threat to the Eurozone's economy. What are some of the soft spots that remain that are driving this concern? The problem is and, and, and no performing loans. So 20% uh, of, of, no, of, of the law of the debt that Italy uh, owes to, to its own internal uh, 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 banks is uh, it's, it's, it's pretty much, uh, you know, it's almost like a one third of, of European debt that is being overall uh, uh, that is being overall in, in that. So it's pretty uh, bad situation when you look at it from a from a macroeconomic uh, situation. Um, one thing that can save Italy is obviously uh, the ability to, to to be able to go and grow maybe 1.52 percent, but it looks for now that is growing just half percent. Of, of the growth that Eurozone is growing. So uh, we're seeing very, uh, you know, big headwinds. Uh, I think uh, as, as economy, global economy, the Fed wants to increase the rates, ECB will have to follow the suit, and that will really, really uh, damage uh, uh, Itali Italian economy. So I'm pretty much skeptical because Italy uh, has, um, you know, very uh, traditional problem with, with, with politics, right. with people getting together, parties getting together and, and, and finding the solutions. And taxation in Italy is, re, is one of the highest in the world. And the IMF certainly shares that concern. They cited political uncertainties, possible setbacks to the reform process, financial fragilities, and re-evaluation of credit risk during monetary policy normalization among some of the downside risks. Which of these are creating the biggest headaches for Italy and what's being done about them? I think that debt, the debt is the biggest uh, headache, obviously, um, and also sovereign debt. Italy has uh, $2.5 trillion in sovereign debt, which is the third in the world, um, and uh, is the third largest economy in, in, in Europe. Um, it's uh, 10 times bigger than Greece. So you can imagine when Greece was having problem, you know, two, three years ago, the world, was, the, the stock market was, was pretty much, you know, v volatility was getting higher. Stock market was not doing well, it was crashing. And you can imagine if we have some issues now with Italy, that could actually uh, ruin this so-called bull market. Now, we know that Italy is also at the forefront of receiving migrants from the crisis. So how is that affecting Italy's economic growth? Well, uh, nine out of ten immigrants uh, that come from, uh, from uh, you know, countries like Africa, Middle East, they, get, they, they go through, uh, through Italy. So Italy has uh, every year 60,000 migrants coming in, into the country. And the problem with that is not economics. It, you know, 60,000 people is not, really, not much for, for economy of, of, of Italy. The problem is uh, Grillo, uh, which is uh, getting more and more popularity and, and fame in Italy, and he's totally anti Europe, anti uh, immigration, and uh, he's actually the most dangerous person in, in, in Europe right now. So, given some of the challenges that Italy's facing, and with an election coming up next year, how much is all this going to play on voters' minds then when they head to the polls? Well, as exactly. Um, only 45% of Italians support euro as a currency. Um, euro, as you know, uh, it's, not, it's, it's, it's not based on, 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 on pure economics and free market. It's, very, it's a political uh, instrument. It's a political uh, currency. So Italy, like other uh, weak economies, they cannot devalue uh, uh, the currency. They cannot support the, the exports. So it's, it's, it's a that's a major problem. And that was, there was a rise in populism in Italy because of that. Uh, you know, France, France did okay. 
Uh, Germany looks okay in terms of moderates uh, running the show, but Italy can be in danger. All right, something to watch indeed. Thank you so much, Videk Radonik, Managing Partner at Beryl Consulting Group.